Hey guys, Sam here, and in today's video, I'm going to go over something that I recently discovered in Unreal Engine. Uh, it's a new feature that's been released in the Unreal Engine 4.27, and this is a great feature. It's been in development for a while, but it's just become much more usable in real projects, and it's really going to bring your renders coming out of Unreal to life. Now, I want to point out that this is primarily for people using Unreal Engine for filmmaking purposes or for creating realistic cutscenes or animations. It's not a real-time renderer, so you won't be able to apply it to your games, but there are alternatives that I'll go over for in-game application if you guys are interested in that. So the new version of Unreal Engine, uh, which is Unreal Engine 5 and it's in beta, uh, has something similar to what I'm going to talk to you about today called Lumen, which works in real time. So that's a better option to pursue for game developers in real time performance. And I'd be happy to make a video about that if you guys are interested. But what I want to talk to you about today is called path tracing. Now, some of you may already be familiar with this concept as it's not a fully new feature in Unreal, and it's essentially the same thing as ray tracing, which is used in things like V-Ray and 3ds Max and Cycles and Blender. And the concept is that the renderer shoots light into the scene, and based on the values you specify in the renderer, it bounces the light off of objects in the scene, which creates indirect lighting. Now this means that Unreal is computing lighting data in a much more accurate way, as this is how light behaves in the real world rather than simply estimating or approximating lighting values and behavior, which Unreal Engine normally does in order to save resources and allow you to render things in real time. So as I said before, using path tracing is going to increase your render times, and as a filmmaker, Render times aren't really a huge deal to me because the alternatives to Unreal like 3ds Max or Blender have monstrous render times and also lack the huge asset of being able to use Quixel Megascans, which I went over in a previous video. So if you guys want to see more about Quixel, uh, head over and check that out. So the introduction of these new added features to path tracing in Unreal Engine 4.27 is a huge deal to people looking to use Unreal Engine for filmmaking especially. So let's get into it. Uh, now I'm first going to show you how to enable path tracing and what all the different settings mean, and then I'll show you how to render your scene using path tracing for best results. So the first thing you're going to want to do is enable ray tracing in your project and to do so we're going to go to the settings menu and then we're going to go to project settings and in the details box here we'll just search for ray tracing and it'll come up here we're going to click the little checkbox to enable it and it might come up with a little dialog box asking you about something just click ok because we're going to need to enable anything that it asks you about uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down here to platforms and we're going to go to windows and make sure that your default rhi is set to directx 12 okay so uh, once you do all that stuff you're gonna have to restart your engine so now we can enable path tracing and to do so we're gonna go up here to where it says lit and we're gonna click on that and we can go down here and now we have this path tracing option and so I'm gonna click that and immediately you'll see it gets very grainy and the graininess goes away but as you can see we can look around here and our lighting is much different now uh, so our lighting is much more realistic if we go back to the lit mode so we go back to path tracing now you can see we have all this all this extra stuff all this light that's filling in the shadows and that's being bounced off of the objects in the scene and it's also coming from our hdri uh, sky map so uh, if we go to our to our camera here we can see there's a huge difference between the lit and the path tracing so when you first enable path tracing it might be very slow and it might be really really grainy so the reason for that is because your sample count is too high so what you can do is add a post-processing volume and i've already done that so i have it here and in our details we're going to search for path tracing Okay, so it already comes up here. Now, yours might be set to 32 and some like really high number, like 16,000 or something. What you wanna do is click the little checkbox next to these, enable them, and then you're going to be able to adjust your bounces, your samples, also this denoiser, which is uh, can be a bit of a hassle. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is your samples. Now, um, the reason your computer is probably lagging is because you have too many samples. So if you reduce this number, it's gonna fix that problem. However, the more samples you have, have, the more detail you're going to have in your scene. So uh, you want to keep this as high as possible while also not overloading your computers. So for the sample setting, I'd recommend something around 500. Uh, you don't want this to be too high because it's going to increase your render time and you don't want it to be too low because then you're not going to get as much detail. 
Uh, now for the max bounce setting, uh, it's initially set around 32. Uh, I find this to be a bit overkill because for our bounces parameter, we don't need this number to be super high. Uh, what it's doing is specifying the number of times the light will bounce off of the surfaces in your scene. So if it's set to one, it's gonna bounce off the first surface that it hits and then it won't bounce again. Uh, if it's set to two, it's gonna bounce off of the first surface and then it's also gonna bounce off of the second surface that it hits and it's gonna spread that light throughout the scene. So the more bounces you include, the more indirect lighting that you have up to the point where the light has completely dissipated. So in other words, you wanna find a number that allows the light to completely dissipate in your scene and then cap the number of bounces there because if you use too high of a number, you're going to increase your render time and it's not gonna make any difference in your scene. So it's essentially just a waste of time if you have too high of a bounce number. Uh, now generally, I wouldn't go above 10 personally because you're not going to get any additional lighting at that point in most scenes and it's only going to increase your render times. So somewhere around 10 is always good. You know, you can go even less if you're like on an outdoor scene like this. Uh, you could honestly probably go down to like five or so and still be fine. You're not really gonna see much of a noticeable difference. So the filter width parameter right here, I'm not actually gonna mess with that, but it is essentially for anti-aliasing. Lower number means a sharper image and more aliasing. A higher number is slightly more blurred and less aliasing. So generally I like to leave this as is, but you can mess with it depending on your scene and how much detail you want. If you turn on the emissive material, that's going to uh, have any emissive materials like you can see these little blue lights I have on this texture and also the HDRI backdrop that's going to turn that on. So it's good to turn that on. The denoiser is generally set to on. Now the denoiser is pretty destructive in my opinion. So I just turn it off and deal with the noise and resolve afterwards. And that's about it. So those are the main settings for enabling path tracing. It's very convenient. No modifying textures or objects or anything like that. Just a few parameters and we're done. Now I do want to point out that not all features of Unreal Engine are supported for path tracing. Volumetric fog and exponential height fog are two big ones that are not supported, but I'll leave a full list below. So if I go to my exponential height fog in this scene, if I set it to visible, you can see it doesn't turn on. And then if I go to the lit version, now it's here. So exponential height fog is not supported. So that's unfortunate, but there are ways to add things like fog to your scene using alternative methods. As you can see here, I've added fog back into my scene. So if you guys want a tutorial on how to add fog to your scene without using exponential height fog, let me know and I will gladly make one. Uh, so now we're about ready to render our scene with path tracing. So I've opened up our sequence here and uh, now what I'm going to do is we're going to click on render and that's going to bring up our movie render queue. And we're going to go into our settings here and uh, we're actually, I'm actually just going to make a new job and we'll go down and find our shot here. Okay, and we're gonna go into our settings and we're gonna delete the export settings and we can go to our output settings and set it to whatever you want, but that's not important for this part of the tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is add anti-aliasing and then I'm also gonna go down here and add the path tracer. And then you can choose uh, your, your format of output. I'm just gonna do ProRes, but you could do uh, you know, an EXR for as much detail as possible. It's gonna give you a lot of information. Uh, but for now, I'll just do a ProRes. Uh, we don't have to modify anything in this, but that's just gonna tell us to uh, render using the path tracer. And then if we go into the anti-aliasing, we can go into our sample count and we have our spatial samples and temporal samples. And now what that's gonna do, uh, these two values actually multiply each other, but you need to have some, some value for each of them because if you don't have uh, spatial samples, you're not gonna get as much detail in each frame. And if you don't have temporal samples, things like motion blur are gonna be messed up and it's not going to be able to calculate properly between the different frames because the temporal samples take into account the different frames and, and how each frame leads into the next one. So uh, generally what I'm gonna do is set this somewhere around 20 a piece. Uh, you can go a little lower if you need to, but we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna also override the anti-aliasing uh, that's going to give you a lot better results and we'll just set this to none. That's fine. Uh, we can set our render warm-up count. Uh, that's just going to allow everything to kind of get going. I would recommend having a few frames of warm-up. And, you know, you can set your output settings, you know, render in 4K, whatever you like. Uh, but that's essentially it. So now all you have to do is click accept and then you can render this job and you're done.
So as you can see, this is a really powerful tool and it's gonna give you amazing realistic results in your renders. You can see a huge difference in the level of detail and the realism and the lighting between these two shots, which were rendered from the exact same scene. This is an excellent tool for filmmakers, especially indie filmmakers, and I imagine that it's only going to improve with time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me to grow my channel and make better videos for you guys. So as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.